Here you are, day number three, you really haven't heard much, if anything, about the great continent of Africa from Philadelphia. Yeah, it, it's, uh, you know, as your colleague said earlier, you know, it's a little disturbing because it's not even just at the convention. In fact, even in the process leading to this convention, uh, Africa, you know, really surfaced on either of the party. It really, really surfaced. In fact, there was a meeting here in town uh, uh, several months ago of the representatives of the two parties. And the Africa Diaspora Group met with them and said, OK, what about Africa? And one of them from the, the other party said, oh, we haven't thought of it. <laughs> that was the response. And everyone said, oh, you know, <laughs> but we haven't thought of it. But, I, but here's the point. Yes, it's true that uh, many Africans, uh, you know, uh, put their hope in this process, who gets elected. In fact, even to the extent that in 2008, one woman in Lagos tried to organize a fundraiser, a fundraising event for the, for the then candidate Barack Obama until the government stepped in and said, oh, you can't be sponsoring foreign government from here. So that's the extent of the sentiment. That has been there, but this time around, the sentiment is rather low. On the one hand, because of the toxic rhetoric you were referring to from the other side, and even though it's generating a lot of interest among Africans, but it's not a sentimental interest. Mm -hmm. It's an interest of caution. It's an interest of, whoa, it's an, uh, where is this coming from? You know? uh, by that, I mean the, the toxic uh, rhetoric that has accompanied this uh, process on both sides. And I think maybe that is why uh, the Democratic Party that normally would say something about Africa in engaging this uh, atmosphere is up to, as you said, they trade nothing. No, but you don't hear anything about it. So I don't know whether that is a prediction of what is to come or is also influenced by what is happening right now. And I would like to think that is not a prediction of what is to come. But in fairness to the Democratic Party, yeah. couldn't it be perhaps uh, really the lack of um, an active African diaspora, really? You are right. Uh, that, that could be so. Actually, I remember uh, an official of the State Department a few months ago addressing the African diaspora group in, uh, at the Senate hearing here and said, we don't see you active enough. And she repeated it. She said, we, we don't see you come up enough. So yes, it's true that um, the Africa diaspora group has not been as active as it could be. And there have been times that are on specific issue like the Africa Trade and Opportunity Act, AGOA. Uh, and sometimes you know, we've talked about presidential term limits and a number of other things. Uh, but we haven't uh, really engaged either of the parties in terms of this process, of, uh, during the process of election. But the question is, um, given the significance of Africa to this country, not just on trade, not just in other relations, but the strategic importance of Africa to this country, I don't think that the, we should be waiting for a lot of promptings from the diaspora group to, to engage the issue. 